Looks like we've had some more people join. Thanks for joining everybody. We'll be starting momentarily. If you're looking to learn about a medical marijuana and finding a doctor, you're in the right place. Uh, if you're not, you're potentially in the wrong place, but it'll be information anyway. the first time in about a decade uh, that my hair can get messed up now that it's a little bit longer because I've got a haircut. Yeah. So I'm not used to that look looking in the mirror and going, what the? Yeah. Today's, a, today's a good day for hats. Yes. Yeah. I think Saturday may be the day that I let my family shave my head. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why, they, have they been bugging you about it? They have. Yeah, it's, it's getting a little fuzzy up there. Um, I just don't know if I, I don't know if I trust them with a blade. Yeah. <laughs> especially it's after being especially after being in quarantine for four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, you know, I just don't get it. Like, every, you know, it's, it's not like it's a perfect circle. So, you know, the last thing was taking a nick out of my, you know, a bone or something. All right, enough about my problems. Uh, again, thank you for joining everybody. If you are here for an introduction to medical marijuana, uh, you're in the right place and we're excited to have you. Thank you very much. Um, housekeeping, uh, we're gonna, it's not gonna be a long presentation. Um, there'll be plenty of time for questions and answer, uh, question Q&A at the end. If you have questions in the middle, feel free to ask them. Uh, this isn't the formal process. We want you to have the information um, so that you're comfortable making a choice um, and, and hopefully trying uh, medical marijuana um, you know, for relief. So uh, with that said, um, George and I are here with you um, as your hosts. Uh, we work for Calm Effect. Uh, Calm Effect is a, an, a medical marijuana education company um, born about three years ago. We were uh, frustrated um, that it was hard to find the, the process to get a medical marijuana card. It was expensive um, and, and people didn't have anywhere to look. And you know, we believe that, you know, there's this natural plant that's out there that has the ability to potentially help people, whether that is for physical relief, uh, you know, chronic pain, um, serious afflictions, or even things like anxiety or PTSD. And if it's out there, people should have the option to be able to try it on their own, um, see if it's right for them. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the different types of medical mar marijuana as we go through, um, but this isn't your... Um, you know, this isn't the, your, the marijuana from when you were a kid or your parents' marijuana. This is a lot different, um, a lot more controlled and consistent. Um, so it's an exciting time uh, for people who are dealing with pains or anxiety or are on uh, pharmaceuticals um, with side effects that they're trying to get off of. So, um, so you've come to the right place. Our lawyer uh, makes us say that uh, we're not lawyers and we're not doctors. Uh, we work with doctors and we work with lawyers, um, but you should always see a doctor for medical advice based upon your condition. Uh, this is for information purposes only. And because um, the plant has been legal for illegal, excuse me, for, you know, for 80 years, um, the FDA and, you know, we haven't done uh, scientific research in a structured way, much like uh, pharmaceuticals do on, on new medications that are coming out. Um, so, you know, claims are, are not really evaluated yet by the FDA. So um, anybody who says medical marijuana can, dot, 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 or CBD can, um, probably isn't being compliant. Uh, we hope that it can, and we have uh, plenty of people who have reported that it does, um, but to make those scientific statements just isn't compliant right now, and so um, we try to be compliant. Um, again, we've been here since uh, 2017. Um, we're trying to make it accessible and affordable, uh, make it simple for you, uh, make sure that you have places to find, uh, to get information, um, and make sure you know that that you're buying legal products, right? Nobody um, nobody wants to have to go to the black market in order to find illegal products. You don't know what you're getting. It's dangerous and it's illegal. Um, as I mentioned, my name's Scott. Um, for me, um, medical marijuana. Um, you know, I wasn't a big marijuana user um, over my life. I was a, a grateful deadhead when I was in college, and you know, and tried it back then. Uh, and it really wasn't for me. But I but I found it again, really. Um, as, as I've gotten older now, um, I use it before I go to bed and what's nice about it is, you know, because it's consistent and I buy it from a dispensary, 
I know what I'm getting and I know, um, you know, now that I'm an adult, not to take too much. And so when I take a little bit before bed, it actually helps me sleep through the night, which is fantastic, right? I get a good night's sleep. I'm not sluggish in the morning. I'm, um, you know, I'm not thinking about taking a nap halfway through the day, which I'm sure my wife ap appreciates. Um, so for me, um, you know, it's worked into my regimen and, and I'm really glad that I have it and I have to take a medication to, to sleep through the night and I don't have to go, um, you know, sleep deprived as well. George, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm uh, George. I've been with Calm Effect a little bit over a year. Uh, per, I am a medical marijuana patient myself. Personally, I use, I've been using CBD liquid drops for anxiety and back pain. And I use uh, marijuana products similar to you, Scott, uh, at night for, for sleep and especially my back pain. And uh, the difference has been night and day. Since I've uh, since I've started this and incorporated it into my regimen, um, I've been in and out of chiropractors, physical therapy. It was just temporary relief. You know, the next day you're right back to where you were. Uh, this this has really helped me in the long run. Like I've noticed a, a change over time. It's it's much easier to get to sleep now. I'm tossing and turning way less. It's just overall the, the pain in my my lower back has significantly decreased. Great. Thanks, George. All right, so if you stick around to the end, if you make it through the whole thing without falling asleep and you're still here, um, we're gonna have an extra bonus for you. Um, there will be no quiz, so don't worry about that. Um, again, you know, and it's, you know, we mentioned that, especially when we, you know, when we have new employees and people that we're working with, this is all new stuff to people. And so if you ask a question multiple times, that's okay. We want you to feel comfortable in the session um, to ask your questions, even if you think it is the most basic question. I guarantee you somebody else has that question too. So feel free to, uh, to ask questions, whether you wanna follow up with this afterwards or you wanna use the Q&A um, uh, widget in the, um, in the Zoom function, feel free to do that. All right, so essentially in most states, um, it's really a three-step process. You're gonna find a doctor and see the doctor. You have to register with the state and then you can shop at a dispensary. Now, each of these um, may happen at a different time frame, depending on the state. Um, some states you may not have to register. I think Maine is one of those examples where the doctor takes care of it for you and there's no state registry. But ultimately, you're finding a doctor. Um, this, you gotta sign up with the state so the dispensary can validate that you've been approved for it, and then you can shop at a dispensary. Right now, most of the dispensaries are doing delivery um, or curbside pickup. Uh, you really can't go into a dispensary. In most of the medical states, um, you'd be surprised what a dispensary looks like, frankly. Um, they look more like, um, you know, a pharmacy was uh, merged with an Apple store. Um, you know, they're really, um, uh, you know, more, more um, upper class, more, more, um, more attractive, more professional um, than you might expect. Um, you know, some of the stores, the, re the, um, the recreational stores on the West Coast may look a little bit more like a, a pawn shop or a head shop. Um, but the medical dispensaries in the East Coast typically are very attractive. And what's incredible about them is that you, um, you know, many states, uh, well, many cities and counties um, have pushed back because they believe that there's, you know, it's going to bring a crime element um, or bring the value down. But I'll bet you if you didn't know a dispensary was there, you wouldn't even recognize it. You know, it just looks like any other kind of um, almost like a, a private pharmacy where there'd be just a name on the wall and it's it's attractive and you just carry on your business. A lot of times when somebody says, is there a dispensary here? We, we say, yes, there's one. And, you know, people don't even know it's, you know, a block away because it really blends in with the environment. Um, so how do you find a doctor? Um, you know, doctors, um, you know, it's, it's not as easy as traditional doctors because insurance doesn't cover it. So you can't go onto your insurance website or something like that. Um, but the first thing I would do is, you know, first of all, in most states, doctors have to be qualified by the state, right? So in Florida, for example, they have to take a two hour exam and then they're on a, a list of, of approved doctors that the state has. Um, the state of Florida actually lists that on their website. Other states are similar. Some states um, give the right to any doctor. As long as you're a, an MD, you can recommend medical marijuana. Um, you should know that in, in marijuana, it is called recommending, not prescribing because Technically, it's still illegal federally, so people can't prescribe it. Um, also, as opposed to a regular medication where a doctor might say, take three pills of X three times a day times five, 
typically medical marijuana is just kind of, they give you a pool of milligrams of marijuana that you have access to. So in theory, in Florida, we'll give an example because that's where we, we started. Uh, in Florida, they would give you a pool of, let's call it 7,000 milligrams. And in theory, you could buy it all the first day if you had the money and they had the product. Uh, whereas a medication, they might, they might ration you until you run out of your first prescription, then you get a second prescription. Um, so it's a little bit different that way. They'll recommend, you know, which way to take it, um, but it's it's up to you because it's a recommendation. You could certainly reach, so friends and family are always the best way, right? If you've had a friend who's seen a doctor or used a service uh, and they had success, that's always a good choice. Um, you could call them directly if you're aware of them. You could Google them, although um, many aren't allowed to advertise on Google. They'll probably still have organic uh, lists. Some medical directories um, might have cannabis doctors on there. There are yet cannabis specific directories that might list all of the, the, um, the, uh, the doctors in the area and the dispensaries. And then there are educational sites, which is what we would call Calm Effect, right? So Calm Effect has a lot of uh, information about how to's and Q and A's and you know, how to get through the process quickly. And then we also have a directory of other kind of um, providers there. Um, what else can I tell you? When you're looking at doctors, right, you want to know uh, what the doctor's experience is um, for the price you're paying, how much it gets you, meaning how many months. So, for example, in Florida, you have to see a doctor at least every seven months. Um, and so if in the most wide open, like with calm effect appointments, our doctors give you a, that recommendation for the full seven months. There are other doctors um, that aren't in the Calm Effect Network that may charge you, <clears throat> excuse me, every month or every 70 days, or may charge you if you want flour on there, which is what we used to call, you know, pre-rolled or, or joints in the past. Um, and, uh, you know, at Calm Effect, we believe that, you know, that it should be very transparent. So it's, it's the full seven months and you get whatever um, type of method of intake that you want. Um, our doctors don't nickel and dime like that. Now, could there be a reason, a good reason why a doctor charges every month or every two months? Well, if you're seeing them and it is a, a highly intensive conversation and you're checking in with them frequently about uh, what kind of questions you have or the effects and those kind of things, then potentially. But for most people, they really just need their recommendation. And then it's a, um, because it's so new, it's, it's a journey, right? It's, um, there's no right answer. Um, I'll go on record and say, um, if George and I had the, the same body build and the same condition, <clears throat> and we tried the same product, <clears throat> excuse me, we might feel different effects because of our makeup. Now, I'm much thinner than George, wink, wink. Um, but, um, but if we were the same, you know, marijuana is different for everybody. And so um, I, I really believe at dispensaries, sometimes it's overkill, right? You don't need a Baskin Robbins if we were to compare it to ice cream. Um, especially when you first start, you don't need um, 31 different flavors. Really what you need to know is, you know, do you want something basic like vanilla? Would you like some chocolate chips? Um, or would you like mint chip, right? And then from there you try it and based upon how it makes you feel, based upon your condition, if it, if it helps, if, it, um, if maybe it got you too high and you want to tailor it back, there are options out there. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit more of that in the, in the future, but it's, but it's really a journey. We recommend you, you keep a journal, um, what product did I take? How did I take it? What time did I take it? Uh, had I eaten recently? How long did it take to hit me and how long did it last? And so based upon those, if, um, if, you, if, if it worked perfectly, fantastic. If it, um, if it doesn't work enough, a doctor dispensary or you could do it at your own, um, you know, we'll say, you know, take a little bit more. Or if it hits you too much, then you could take a little bit back. What we do know is nobody's overdosed from the plant directly. So in a worst case scenario, if you, if you consume too much, you go to bed. You might beat up a bag of Doritos or some Oreos, but, but just go to sleep and you'll sleep it off and it won't be a big problem. All right, so doctor's appointments can either be in person or they can be um, telemedicine nowadays. And so um, at one point before COVID hit, um, there were five states that were telemedicine for everything. You could do it that way. So that's, um, Oklahoma, Missouri, New York, Maine, and Rhode Island. Florida was never telemedicine, but during COVID, um, they now say that if you already have seen a doctor and you have your card and you're just going for a recertification, you can do that via telemedicine. We know there's a bunch of doctors as well that try to do most of it during telemedicine, but since there is a, 
in the office component of it, they do make you swing by there for a couple of minutes to go in there and, you know, and, and so they can do a quick physical exam. Um, but 99% of it can be done via telemedicine so that you're in contact with people as little as possible. Now, other states have started approving um, telemedicine um, due to the, into the quarantining, right? So states like um, Massachusetts is allowing it, Pennsylvania, Ohio, um, I believe Illinois has some, um, what was the one that some, New Hampshire might have some. And so uh, more and more states are starting to adopt this. Now, the question we all have is now that the toothpaste is out of the tube, you know, when this, you know, when the pandemic is over, are they going to keep telemedicine going or are they going to make people go back to um, in-person appointments and the jury's still out? Uh, but so um, calm effect options, we book people uh, in Florida as well as other states, depending on what the telemedicine laws are. We, you know, we, we try to get people telemedicine when all, when, when, uh, when it's possible. So for Florida, um, if you're recertifying, you can do it via telemedicine with the existing doctor. And if you're a new patient, um, again, uh, we can set you up with a doctor who can do um, often, who can do um, a bulk of the um, of the workup uh, over telemedicine, and then but you do have to swing by quickly uh, to see them to qualify at the physical part. If you're just joining us, I see more people have joined the conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. We're talking about medical marijuana today. Um, we will have links to this video up on the website afterwards. And if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask them in our um, Q and A panel. How do you prepare for your doctor's appointment? Okay, in most states, medical, um, in most medical states, the doctor is really verifying that you have a condition that's already been diagnosed. So let me say that again. So the, the marijuana doctor is really just saying, um, and I'll use George's example, George, you have XYZ and XYZ qualifies. I recommend medical marijuana because it could be a suitable alternative for what the other doctor uh, recommended for you or, or prescribed you. And so the doctors in a medical marijuana appointment aren't really diagnosing a condition, right? They're not really diagnosing PTSD or God forbid, you know, cancer or HIV or MS or something like that. They're just seeing if another doctor has seen you and they're verifying it and saying, okay, I recommend medical marijuana. And so what are they looking to verify? They're gonna have a conversation with you, you'll have entry paperwork, but they really want some sort of records or official information so that they can see Dr. Jones said this, you know, um, I know when I go to my general um, practitioner, when I leave every single time, uh, there's a list of everything on that piece of paper that I've had for the last 10 years. I hope it doesn't get into the wrong hands. Um, so, you know, the doctor could look on that and just circle, you know, chronic pain, anxiety, whatever the condition is and say, okay, somebody else is diagnosed, I'm comfortable doing this. Um, some doctors will accept a letter from another doctor. Um, you know, some doctors don't need records in rare cases, um, but if it's obvious to them that there's that condition, um, then they might let you slip by, but you always want to check with the doctor first. Now, um, if you don't, if you've seen the doctor and you don't have your medical records, I wouldn't worry about that. In most states, there is a little bit of a delay um, as far as getting approved by the state. And so in theory, you could see the medical marijuana doctor and either A, you could get the records or B, you could give them a medical release so they can get the records for you. And it may take a little while, you know, uh, you know probably a week or so, but they can get those records for you. But if you can get a, an appointment at a convenient time, uh, for a price that you're looking for and a place that you're, you're comfortable with, then I would go ahead and get the appointment and then worry about the records afterwards. Um, because uh, right now it's, it's a little more challenging to get appointment times because um, doctors are seeing less to make sure that there's not too many people in their waiting rooms, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have good relationships with our doctors so we can get you in pretty quickly. We have a lot of doctors that um, will see our patients that day um, if possible. So you could sign that medical release. You could also establish a, rela a relationship with that doctor. So um, if your medical marijuana doctor also has a general practice or urgent care, you could talk to them, for example, about your arthritis, and then they could give you a workup on that, establish that you have arthritis, and they might have to charge you a fee or charge your insurance for the regular exam, and then you do the medical marijuana exam afterwards uh, because they had established the relationship or comfortable um, with your, um, you know, that you have that condition. Um, and then know your history, right? So, you know, most doctors um, want you to write down if you had any surgeries or what conditions you've had or medications. 
I don't think this is anything to stress about. They're just looking for a complete picture um, because they want to help you, right? If you're on certain kinds of medication, they want to talk to you about um, how to wean you off them, um, what the combinations might act like. Um, but ultimately, they, they want to give you the best medication, the best recommendation possible so that they can begin to help you. When you go to that doctor's appointment, you're going to want some an identification piece, right? So a driver's license or a state ID, a passport. If you don't have one of those, um, you know, I don't think a doctor is going to turn you away because of it, but it's always good to have, especially when you um, start registering with the state. Um, but, you know, let, let's ask those questions before you get there so we can set you up for success. Um, when you register with the state, typically you need some sort of proof of residency. So that's where that driver's license or ID really comes in handy. A passport doesn't have your address, unfortunately. So um, if you don't have a license or a state ID, a lot of times in most states you can, um, you can upload a couple of uh, other documents that qualify. In Florida, for example, it's a mortgage or a lease or a, um, a, a driver's registration uh, for your vehicle, um, a utility bill, a banking bill, you know, some sort of um, document that's official that has your name and your address. Um, but it's got to be, it's got to have substance, right? It couldn't be a library card or a blockbuster card from, from years ago. Um, so, you know, those utility bills and the banks usually qualify. Um, the doctor will typically help you um, with your state application. Whoops. Um, will help will typically help you with your state application if they don't um, you can do it on your own or um, or we can help you um, oftentimes there's a choice between sending in the application and um, and doing it online we always recommend doing it online um, there is a fee that typically states charge in florida it's 75 dollars per year um, plus a little service charge um, and you can do it it's just a, it's a state website so it's a little bit confusing um, we have team members and there are other organizations out there that hopefully do it as well um, that we can walk you through it and we can even troubleshoot. Um, George is our expert uh, for, um, for state registration, so he knows how to get a hold of the, uh, the state of Florida if there's any questions. Um, we have never seen somebody get rejected for a health reason. Uh, we've never seen somebody get rejected permanently. Sometimes they will reject it temporarily because the data doesn't match. And so if your last name has changed, it doesn't match your license or your address has changed or there's a typo they'll reject it. And we, we can troubleshoot with you to figure out how to get it corrected so that you can get approved. Right now in Florida, it's taken about two to three weeks, unfortunately, um, you know, with COVID, but, um, but they're getting through them. And so, uh, so it's still a very good time to get your, um, to get your card uh, because they are working through it pretty quickly. So once you get approved, uh, in Florida, it's once you received your email, you don't have to wait for the card itself to come in the mail. Once you get the email that says you're approved, the dispensary will have, have access to, um, to your accounts in the system and are able to provide you with the product um, that you're looking for. So, you know, I mentioned Baskin Robbins earlier. Um, so first of all, there's two things that you know, should know. There's, there's CBD and there's THC, right? Um, there's two types of plants, which is the hemp plant and the cannabis plant. Um, each one of those has chemicals in there. Um, the cannabis plant, uh, typically known as marijuana, has CBD plus THC plus a whole bunch of other compounds that um, they're starting to learn more about but um, aren't really important for this part of the conversation. The hemp plant has just CBD and those other chemicals but no THC. So it's THC that actually gives that euphoric feeling or, or that high that people talk about. Um, you know, and there are, different there are different variations of high depending on which strain of the marijuana you have, right? So, um, you know, it's like saying, uh, you know, there's a bunch of different ice creams, but only a few of them have chocolate chips in them. And so if you're interested in the THC part, you, you choose the ones with the chocolate chips. I'm not saying that literally marijuana has chocolate chips though. Um, and so there's a variety of strains, um, you know, nowadays as opposed to years ago when they just handed you some marijuana, whatever it was you smoked, now you can go in and choose. And so if you liked, um, you know, strain A, then you could ask the dispensary next time, do they have some strain A or you can go to another dispensary and might have strain A. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, THC, so THC gives you that high feeling that we talked about. And again, it's, um, you know, there are different degrees of high depending on which pieces, which, which of the plants you use or hybrids um, or that kind of stuff. Um, what was I going to say as well? I forget. I was going to say one more thing about that. But um, 
but again, it's a journey. And so try different ones and, and figure out how it feels for you. Um, again, we have a Q&A um, widget here. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to ask them. Uh, we want to, uh, to give you as much information as possible. All right, George, any other thoughts on the, uh, the strains and the terms and that kind of stuff? Uh, I mean, the only thing I would really add is in the kind of building on what you were saying, you know, say you try something and you like it, uh, you can go ahead and stick with that. Or it, you go to a dispensary and you can talk to some of the, the uh, you know, employees there and just tell them, hey, I have severe lower back pain. I have trouble falling asleep. You know, is there anything we can recommend like for my specific symptoms? And a lot of times they will have something maybe specifically for your symptoms. So it's always good to ask. Yep. All right, so how do you take it? Um, you know, there's different ways that you don't have to smoke it and you don't have to vape it if you're concerned about that. Um, there's tinctures, which are drops under the tongue, edibles, so you could take capsules or eat gummies. There's topicals, um, which is like a, a lotion on your skin. Um, there's even other ways you could take it. There's even suppositories in some cases if, um, if you can't ingest it down your digestive tract. Um, so there's a wide variety of ways depending on what your condition is and what you're most comfortable with. Um, George, any comments about, um, about these? I mean, when it comes to our routes of administration and dosing and stuff, I always recommend people start slow. So you want to, uh, for example, uh, let's go with, with gummies. Uh, maybe just start off with one, wait 20 minutes and see how you feel like a CBD gummy. Uh, you know, you could always take more. You can't untake stuff. Um, it just more in terms of a route of administration. There are some that are fast acting, that stay in your system uh, not as long as others, and there's some that are extended release. So for example, vaping, a vape, uh, let's we'll just go for example, a THC vapor cartridge, they're pretty popular, I'm sure uh, you guys have seen them. You, you know, you, you take a, a hit of that or a puff of that, and you feel it almost instantly. Uh, I'd say within like two minutes, you, you pretty much feel it, but it, goes, it dies pretty quick too. It goes away, so it only lasts about an hour or two where on the other hand, tinctures or edibles or anything that really is processed by your liver or is uh, ingested sublingually, takes a little bit more time to feel the effects and to kick in, but it has a longer half-life. So you will feel the effects uh, more. It'll stay in your system longer. Yeah, thank you, George. Uh, we have a comment from the, um, from, the, um, from the audience about aerosol inhalers. Yes, there are some dispensaries that have aerosol inhalers. Thank you for that comment. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting when, when we talk about marijuana in general, right, we, we talk about the calm life and, um, you know, right now it's, it's all still so very new um, and, um, you know, people are becoming more comfortable with it, um, but more and more people are trying it and we'd expect as it becomes more legalized across the country um, that you'll see, um, you know, a CBD and THC in, in different types of products, right? And so it's, it's not such a far fetch to say, um, you know, four of us may go out in three years and one person may have a beer, another person will have uh, a glass of wine that has THC, somebody else may be biting on a, you know, a cookie that has THC and somebody else is, you know, is having a, some Jack Daniels. Um, it may not be so far fetched to say that CBD lotion comes in other types of consumer goods um, to reduce inflammation as more tests come through and, and everything is proved, um, you know, they, um, you know, more, more products will come to market. Um, we have a question about, um, about traveling. Um, it depends on the state that you're from about remote consultations when it comes to come to renewing your medical recommendation. Um, so if you're, if, if you're a Florida resident, for example, and you are a, um, and you already have a card at, for right now, during the COVID crisis, you're allowed to use telemedicine before COVID you, you had to see a doctor in person. So Florida, technically the laws say you have to do everything in person for your doctor's appointments every seven months because of COVID. They're saying that if you're recertifying with your existing doctor, um, then you can do that via telemedicine. Whether that will stay or not, we don't know. Um, other states where telemedicine is, is available, you could do it via telemedicine clearly, um, but if they roll back the new um, telemedicine law in, in, in Florida, you may have to go back again. So depending on when your seven months is up, it may behoove you to do a telemedicine um, call even a little bit early 
if that's important to you. Uh, another question about uh, aerosol inhalers better for people with uh, COPD, emphysema, or lung issues? I would, uh, I, would, I would just say, if you have lung issues or emphysema or anything, uh, I would just maybe start out with non-inhalants first. Maybe try a topical cream or gummies or a tincture. If you really have you know, lung issues or very sensitive lungs, maybe like inhalate routes aren't uh, the best option for you. I would, I would certainly check with your doctor for something specific like that question. That's a great question. Um, we're a little hesitant to, to make recommendations that specific. I wish I did have the answer, but um, just to be safe, you should probably check with your um, marijuana doctor, or if you're going to be scheduling with a doctor, you should ask him, that, him or her that question, but that's a good question as well. Okay, so um, other questions? You guys are asking some good questions. We have a lot of people out there. Uh, you must have some questions. Who has a question? Ask your questions. Okay. Um, so, you know, we're here to help you. I, I again, I think that, um, People, um, I don't, you know, I see somebody raising their hand. I see multiple people raising their hand. I just don't know what that means. <laughs> to you, George? Hand raise, I would assume that that means a question, no? Uh, I don't know. I, you know, it could mean uh, a, high a high five, you're doing a great job. But we have the, um, the Q&A where you can ask a question. We have the comments, uh, the chat you can talk into as well. Um, but if you're high-fiving us to say great job, thank you, I guess. Um, we have uh, a, what, oh, here's a question. What would you say is your first step if you've never used medical marijuana? Uh, that is a great question. So I'd say um, if you have a condition that qualifies, then I'd say see a doctor, right? Um, we can help you schedule an appointment for um, that's affordable. Um, get yourself approved and then we can, um, you know, and then try something, right? And we can walk you through that process, but take something, you know, like George said earlier, take take a, a small amount and then increase as needed, um, but just experiment with it, right? Embrace it and realize that it's here to stay. And, you know, if it's, um, if it helps you and it has helped your pain or your anxiety and it has stopped you from using a medication, then that's a real good thing, right? Um, Couple things. So, if the question is, um, is it is it legal? So, federally, it is illegal, right? The U.S. government says it's illegal, but um, but it's said that the states can make up their own rules about it. So, each state can say whether they're going to allow it or not, and the federal government says they're not going to um, they're not going to interfere with that. Which is why, if your state says it's legal and you have a card and you have marijuana with you, it's it's not it's not illegal in that state, right? And there's no evidence of the government, the federal government, overruling that or or crossing the line. Um, and uh, and so the so the states have that right. We believe that ultimately most states will allow medical, then they will ultimately allow recreational or adult use, as it's called. And then, uh, and the federal government, you know, we're going to be a country that that approves of it at some point, whether it's next year, whether it's five years from now, who knows? I'd, I'd imagine it's less than ten years. Um, but that that marijuana is here to stay, um, and so people can use it for medical reasons. They can use it for adult use reasons. Uh, you know, we believe if you're using it and it's helping you and it's not interfering with anything in your life, you should have access to it, um, just like alcohol or, or anything else that's legal. Uh, Question in the audience about um, if you hate the taste of drops and you don't want to use pens. George, thoughts on that before I answer? Sure. Uh, I mean, you could always try, if, if it's just a taste issue, you don't like the taste of drops or anything with pens, um, maybe try some whole flour. Uh, if not, maybe some CBD gummies. Or um, I know it, it depends, are you using a, a flavored? A flavored uh, tincture or anything like that because I know some have flavors and some just are natural like it literally just tastes uh, like marijuana like it just tastes like a plant literally um, but I know there's some that have flavors like a mint or something like that so maybe change up the flavor or uh, cha uh, change the route of administration like I said gummies or uh, capsules something like that maybe with no taste. George you can also put it in certain types of food though right so um depending on the drop that, that's another one also yeah 
Yeah, so depending on the drop, you could mix it with something. Mix it with uh, more liquid or, or, a, uh, or food like you suggested also. And I know that they also have concentrates that you can literally, it comes in a syringe and you can really just squeeze it in a, between a sandwich and a piece of bread and have a snack. Yeah, and people bake with it, right? So, um, that, yes. you, you so what, when you when you bake with with cannabis, right? You can't bake with just the flour or the you know the, the green bud itself, right? You have to uh, decarb it, right? So it goes through a process, and that's how we get the liquids um, at a at a high level. And so those liquids, then you can you can bake with it or add it to different foods. And then uh, we got another one. So in other words, if you don't like it, uh, you've wasted your money. I know there's a good amount of dispensaries that will. Uh, take products back. If you don't like them, they will refund you and some not. It really is just up to dispensary policy. Yeah. Um, give us a call if that's the, you know, if that's the question, we could try to walk you through what to do next specifically once we had more information um, to try to help you. You could also put it into a capsule shell, I believe. Uh, in theory, if you put the, you know, make sure you put the right amount, but you can probably buy the um, empty capsules and put it in there and, and try to get it down that way. Another question, um, can you travel with uh, medical marijuana? Um, that's another good question. So because it's illegal federally, right, um, federal systems like credit cards and insurance won't carry it. And, um, and so, um, you know, state by, it's really state by state. So what that means is if you try to go over the state border, technically that's not legal. Um, if you try to fly with it, technically that's not legal. Um, I am not a lawyer. Uh, I'm not your advisor, but I think that um, I wouldn't stress about those kind of things. I know people who do fly with it. I'm not sure the TSA is is that concerned if you have, um, you know, as long as the liquid is less than the amount, um, or you know, if if you're driving with it, I certainly wouldn't have it on your seat with a big sign that says marijuana here, right? If it's in the glove compartment or under the seat, you're, you're probably fine. Again, it's illegal. I'm not your lawyer. Um, but we don't we don't hear about people having those types of issues. Worst case scenario is probably they throw it away. Um, you know, we, we haven't heard of of law enforcement becoming too aggressive with it. Um, how do you know if a dispensary is a good one? Uh, that's a good question. So um, are they regulated? Are you getting what you pay for? Um, so that's a that's a real good question. Um, so in most states for medical, the dispensaries are regulated, right? They are, you know, they have to go through tests and we recommend going through the dispensaries or, or even um, for, for, for THC products as well as CBD products sometimes, unless you know what organization is producing the CBD because of those, um, those rigid um, tests that they have to do. Most regulated dispensaries have to um, have tests on the product to make sure there's the an accurate percentage of THC and CBD to make sure there's no metals in the product or there's no pesticides in the product, right? Because they're processing a plant into sometimes a liquid or, um, or a lotion. And so um, you want to make sure that you know exactly what's going in there, right? And so, um, so the dispensaries are regulated in that matter. So, um, so I would have confidence um, in some of the, you know, in the big medical States that have um, like Florida, it's, um, you know, it's vertically integrated. So there's a, you know, it's just, you know, a dozen or so brands and, and all of those I would feel comfortable buying product from um, as far as uh, compliance or uh, getting what you, what you pay for. Um, you know, flour is a little bit different. Um, you know, everybody tries to be um, as secure as possible. So if you're buying an eighth or you're buying pre-rolls, you're getting the right amount. Um, the THC, you know, I think that these these organizations are so concerned about losing their licenses. Um, it's not a matter of trying to, or uh, hopefully I'm not being naive, but it's not a matter of um, trying to take advantage of the consumers. Is it possible they made a mistake? Sure. Um, but by and large, you, what you're buying is what you're getting. Um, so I'd feel good about that. Um, you can go to reviews. Um, we do reviews on our YouTube channel uh, is a good spot. And then places like uh, Weed Maps and Leafly are um, great places to find reviews as well. Um, you know, some of their websites have, uh, have reviews. Uh, in our VIP program, uh, we talk about uh, different dispensaries and, um, and their discounts and, um, and what products they have, uh, as well as uh, videos about uh, of the interior, so you can take a look at that so you're more comfortable with it. Um, but yeah, well, you know, Colorado, I'm, you know, I'm not sure about, you know, there's so many different dispensaries and they're not, you know, they're not vertically integrated. So 
I'd say um, you can't be positive like you would be in Florida at the medical dispensaries or Massachusetts, but I think that um, I haven't heard of anybody being taken advantage per se. Um, I think most of them are pretty good. Um, we can make some recommendations if you want to reach out to us, um, you know, um, at any point, right? Whether it's today or after you've tried some, if you've tried, uh, you know, uh, a Wendy's and, and you want to try Burger King, we could try to connect you so you can get a quick order. Um, if you tried Wendy's and Burger King and you said you didn't really care for them, we could recommend, uh, you know, a pizza place. Clearly I'm making metaphors, <laughs> uh, but we want to help. Uh, all right. Uh, did I see another question come in? Just looking through these questions. Um, as George said, some people, some of the, some of the organizations will take um, product back and, and perhaps give you equal to what's left in yours. Others might not. Um, we can help walk you through that as well. Okay, another question about uh, being a caregiver. Um, he's afraid of hurting his uh, memory and alertness. You know, that's a good question. For me, um, uh, I was very concerned about that as well. And I found, you know, like I said earlier, that um, by not wanting to, con you know, by not consuming too much, right, it, it stopped that. And so I think the challenge is it is, it is different for everybody, right? And so... I would focus on um, you know the the pain and let the um, dispensary know um, what your concern is, and then I, I would take a little bit, right? Um, I think things that are in um, high in THC will probably affect your alertness. Um, CBD can even that out, a little, not, not literally even it out, but it can it can um, it can uh, decrease the highness of the THC. And so we always recommend that. You have CBD as well, so in case you're too, feeling too high or euphoric or you know your alertness is, is down, you use some of the CBD to counteract it. But you know, it's you know we always warn you know to be careful about the alertness in general, right? You don't want to be a first-time medical marijuana user and then go out and run a forklift or a jackhammer, right? Um, or go driving at first. You want to see what your body's tolerance is so that it's good for you. It's make sure it's good for you before you try to do any of those things. Um, I, you know, I used to, I, and I used to worry about my memory as well, you know, because that's one of the, uh, you know, the short term memory is one of the stereotypes about it. Um, I can't remember if they, no, I'm just kidding. I think that um, I don't find um, that I have those kind of issues anymore, as far as I know. Um, I, re I remember when I was younger, when I used to smoke, you know, recreational marijuana, um, I used to worry about that kind of stuff. And I'd almost feel like I had a hangover the next day uh, when I was, when I was looking for words. George, any thoughts on, on memory or alertness from your side? Uh, you know, I can only go on my personal experience. Uh, I personally have not experienced any issues with uh, memory or anything like that. But again, that's just, that's just my experience. With so you me. think. Right. That I can remember. <laughs> um, here's what I would recommend, George. Uh, let me know if you agree with this. For that kind of case, I would recommend something that isn't necessarily indexing high on the THC side, that it's more, more in line with a THC and CBD one-to-one -one or something like that. I was so, just going to say maybe a blend. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would start off with, and I would start a little bit lower, um, a, a smaller dose if that's the concern. But um, listen, if you know, in severe arthritis, you know, maybe, maybe a lotion or a, um, a topical is the better thing for that anyway because of the physical pain. Right. Um, but there's, there's a lot of options out there. Again, it's a journey and, you know, that's part of the challenge is, is talking to your father about, um, about uh, this being a journey and trying to find something that works for him where he wouldn't, wouldn't have to be dependent on a pill or have to deal with that pain. All right. Uh, keep asking those great questions, everybody. Thank you. So we, um, so Calm Effect can help with doctor's appointments. Um, we can help you with your application and we can help you with product assistance too. We have good relationships with the, um, with the different uh, dispensaries. And so we have our VIP program um, right now that goes for uh, $29 and we're actually moving it to a $9.99 per month because um, we have uh, you know, frequent uh, webinars in there and, and office hours and that kind of stuff. Um, but today I mentioned that there's gonna be a, um, I was gonna mention there's a free bonus and we're moving to, um, so we have our regular appointments and then we have appointments plus which includes the VIP program with it. And so for the price of an appointment, which is 149 right now, 
Other, um, other doctors charge 200 to $300, so 149 is a great deal. Um, we're gonna include the VIP program for life in there. So, um, you know, if you calculated 999 a month, you know, times, let's just, just call it two years, that's 200, uh, it's $240 of savings there that you'll have um, just for scheduling an appointment with us today. So if you schedule an appointment with us today, um, Um, if you schedule an appointment, I'll, I'll address that comment in a second. Um, so if you put, if you apply for an appointment today and you, um, then we'll throw that in for you free. Um, we know who attended today, so we'll be able to match up those names. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us at info at uh, com .com or give us a call at 954-789-0482. Um, and uh, we'll walk you through the whole process. All right, so we've had a few more questions. All of a sudden, they're coming in. Okay, so let's get to them. Um, all right, um, we have one who, person who tried CBD for lower back pain. It had no effect. They live in Virginia, and it was ordered illegally. They could not get anything with THC. Yeah, Virginia's a funky state right now. Um, I don't think that there's a lot of access there, although I hear momentum going on there. Here's the thing about CBD, and I mentioned this earlier, right? So CBD can be sold over the counter because of the lack of THC in there. And so um, I don't know where you got your CBD from, but when they did a test down here in Florida, in South Florida, um, you know, they tried 10 different CBD products and only about half of them actually had CBD. Um, so, you know, I, I know that people have, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's natural markets and there's um, farmers markets and there's uh, friends who are selling CBD and uh, yoga studios and gas stations, right? I think we'd all agree you probably shouldn't get it at a gas station. But I, I, you know, we just don't know the quality of any of that CBD that's out there. The government is still putting together hemp regulations and guidelines for testing. And um, ultimately, each batch of CD will have to have like a barcode on it so you can see exactly where and when and how it was made. Um, I would stick with really just, you know, um, you know, you know, organizations that you can you can bet your product that it's, it's going to be um, what it says it is, right? So the dispensaries that, you know, they're not gonna lose their license over it. So you can bet that there's CBD in there. We sell actually on our site um, CBD from CBDMD, which is publicly traded. A lot of athletes use their product. Um, I use their product, so I feel comfortable with it. Um, and we sell it for a discount on our site to our customers. So if you wanna try it there. Um, now, if it was legitimate CBD and it was working, um, you know, different doses and, and different products work for different people, right? I can tell you that um, I take CBD and I, and I feel really good um, since I've been taking it and um, not run down. And, um, and in fact, about two weeks ago, I pulled my back and I could barely step, you know, uh, sit up and stand up off the couch. And I took a lot of extra CBD that day. And amazingly, you know, a couple of days later, I wasn't feeling anything when I thought it was, you know, one of these six month things that just kind of nag at you. Um, you know, so for me, it worked. I think sometimes you have to take um, more milligrams than, you know, than you would think for CBD to gain that tolerance. It's called titration where you, you ramp up on it. Um, George, I know you use CBD and you really swear by it, right? Yeah. I uh, personally, I use liquid CBD. It's a tincture I put under my tongue. Uh, it's just a different route of administration, but the, the same, uh, you know, same nonetheless. Well, it's, it, I think that's an important differentiation, right? So um, if you take a liquid as opposed to a gummy, right? In, in Florida, you can't get THC gummies to begin with, but you can get CBD gummies. Um, but, you know, you want to keep it under your tongue for two to three minutes, right? So that um, the solution yeah. dissolves um, it, through, your, through your mouth yeah. as so, opposed to swallowing it, right? And so when you chew a gummy, um, you know, I, I can't keep it in my mouth for two, three minutes. I'm chewing, chewing, chewing and swallowing. And so you're not absorbing all of the CBD that you could with a tincture like George is using. So um, that's something I, I would think about as well. All right, next question. I recently moved from Maine to Florida. Um, yeah, Maine is very inexpensive compared to Florida. Um, you know, so, so the question becomes Maine versus Florida and the affordability. Um, yeah, Maine's a lot different. Um, and uh, so Florida, you know, 
the prices are, you know, they range, right? So like I said, you could, you could find doctors for, you know, three to $400, which is ridiculous. And that's why we started scheduling our own, own appointments and finding doctors that would take less. And so, you know, $149 for the seven months is, is really one of the lower price points in the market. Um, you know, and then you get our VIP package if you went through us. I don't know if there's anybody, you know, you can sometimes find $99 appointments out there. Um, we like to have events when, um, you know, when there's not a pandemic so that we can try to make it even more affordable for people. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's not like Maine where, you know, it can be much less expensive for California. Um, the products, um, you know, I think that um, you'll get better deals right where um, if you buy concentrates, and you're buying for the long term as opposed to, you know, like any other product, buying a little, buying a little, buying a little. But, you know, you can buy a little. You know, at one point, some of the entry price levels was like 50 or $60. Now you can, you can go in there and buy a couple pre-rolls to at least feel, you know, figure out what works for you and what you like. Um, if you're interested in flour, then you could always buy what an eighth or an ounce or, you know, whatever's legally sold at the dispensaries and, and roll your own, um, you know, using a grinder and, and paper cones and that kind of stuff. And I think that's, that makes it less expensive for you as well. Uh, if you don't like it, you've wasted your money. Uh, yeah, you know, um, that's a relatively true, um, you know, it's, it's a regulated product, right? So they can't necessarily take it back and, and resell it. And because it has the ability to be abused by people, you know, that, you know, return policies are funky. There are some organizations that are more, um, that are more flexible than others. Um, but I, you know, I would try it if you, if you don't like it, um, you know, we have to break that down to the, the effect and, and the taste. And so um, there might be ways to, um, you know, to adjust so you don't, you know, you haven't lost a product, um, but you can take it in a manner that helps you or, um, or, uh, or taste better when you consume it. Um, another comment about a doctor being registered with the state of Virginia, but will not discuss it with you. His only comment is illegal. Listen, there's a lot of doctors out there who say it's illegal and are not comfortable with it, right? Um, just like many, many consumers who are now using medical marijuana five years ago would have said it's illegal and I won't do it. So there's two things, right? So if, if, um, and I'm not sure specifically what the law reads right now in Virginia, but if, if you said to me, there's a doctor in Florida who says that it's illegal, I would say, uh, you're right, federally it is legal, but the state has said it's legal. And so um, if you believed in it, you could recommend it if you, were, if you were certified to do that. Now there are, you know, whether a doc, you know, so there's a lot of doctors that are against it, frankly, and some doctors, um, it may be because um, they don't believe in it. They may think that their patients are going to abuse it. Um, they like prescribing another medication for them. Um, there can be a variety of reasons. Um, and I like to think that, you know, there are the right reasons why doctors are saying no to it. Um, I don't know if a Virginia doctor is, is legally allowed to recommend it right now, um, but uh, you'll have to check, you'll have to check around on that. If, um, if you want us to help you, just send an email to Infocom Effect, and we'd be happy to take a look at that and see if we can find somebody for you. All right. Uh, okay, so we have a recommendation from somebody to put in your check bag, to not put in your carry-on because they'll take it. Um, that person had experience with this. I'm sorry you lost your product. Um, so yeah, again, it's 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 illegal to fly with it because you're going through you know the you know inter interstate you know you know airways and in the um, you know it's TSA is federal um, and you can't drive with it across the state boundaries. Um, so I would just say you know you have to do it at your own risk. I would not take a lot of it if you were going to try that, and I would be subtle with it. Um, again, it is illegal, but um, pe people do do it, and so I hope you've had better success uh, since you got it taken away. Other questions? All right, you guys have had great, great questions. Thank you so much. Um, again, you can email us at info at com .com or call us at 954-789-0482. We offer services in Florida, um, Oklahoma, Missouri, New York, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Maine, Pennsylvania, Ohio uh, right now. So if you're looking for a doctor's appointment or your friends or family that are looking for information, please let them know about Comeffect.com, and we'll see you all at the uh, the next one. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thanks, guys.